Hey everybody, Justin with VMP here, holding a couple of throttle bodies. So I wanna basically put some information out there as to how to choose which throttle body you should run on your build. I've got our VMP 163R throttle body. This is a big single blade with kind of an elliptical roval design. And this is our old standby, the Twinjet 69 with a twin blade design. They both have the same factory Ford electronics. We've got a heat sink on the larger one to help with cooling, both factory Ford TPS sensors. They both are on the GT500 bolt pattern, so they fit all generations of VMP blowers and a bunch of Ford and Whipple and other companies' blowers. They fit some naturally aspirated intake manifolds. We have these listed on our website, and we have horsepower ranges as to where the throttle bodies, basically as to where you know the range of the throttle bodies are good up to from an airflow standpoint before they'll become a restriction. Now, however, there are more nuances than that when selecting the throttle body. Everybody wants to make max power these days, so they often stray away from the old standby of the twin jet and they go to a mono blade throttle body. Now, we make these for a reason, because they make really good power. All of the seven second TVS cars run these, all of the high horsepower GT500 stick shift cars run these. Um, it's a great throttle body. 16.3 square inches of surface area. I actually designed this to be just a smidge smaller than the KB168 to be easier on the electronics, easier on tuning, easier on idle. This big, this angle right here, I shouldn't call it an angle, I should call it a curve. When the motor goes to break open the throttle body, it makes it easier. And this is where the nuance lies. We are all limited. I say we, VMP, Whipple, Kenny Bell, everybody making throttle bodies in the aftermarket, we're limited by the factory Ford electronics. This is what we're given, this is what's calibrated to work with the ECU, and at this point, it's an 18 year old plus design. It's not the greatest, but it's what you can bolt onto the car and works without going to standalone ECU. So here's where I'm going with this. The Electronics just don't have a whole lot of torque to open this blade. And I say open because that's the hardest thing that this motor will do. When this throttle blade is closed and just barely cracking open, you're using a ton of effort to break the vacuum and then let all the air in. Um, staying wide open is pretty easy. There's some other issues there, I'll talk about those more later. Um, but cracking open is a big issue. And this is where people get fail safes, the tuners get pissed off, the customers get frustrated, and I just want you to know the background behind it so you can make the right choice for your build. The number one enemy of big throttle bodies is high vacuum. All of these cars with high compression and really tight, efficient factory style cams they pull a lot of vacuum at idle and they'll pull 20 inches. So this blade is literally being slammed shut by the force of vacuum. Um, just enough air is leaking around it to keep the engine idling. And then you go to tip in and the blade is stuck. So the car doesn't respond. The next time you tip in, the computer sees a disagreement over seven degrees and says, oh, fail safe, shut down, end of story. And that's where all the tuners get pissed, the customers get frustrated. As soon as you run the same throttle body, the same combo on a setup that pulls less vacuum at idle, maybe it's a low compression built motor because lower compression is less efficient, or it's got aftermarket camshafts with more overlap and they just don't pull as much vacuum because they're designed to flow a lot of air at high RPM, the vacuum goes down, the throttle blade actually kind of like neutrals out at idle at like two or three degrees open because that engine needs more air to idle. And then when you do go to tip in and crack it open, it does so really easily. There's not a lot of vacuum force working against it. And you go what and you're happy. We recently have had some customers doing some really, really high horsepower builds with stock camshafts and they have run into this issue. Now, here's where lies the middle ground. The GT500s, being a low compression engine, being factory supercharged, they're kind of in the middle airflow wise, so they can usually get away with a big monoblade throttle body with no issues. But the Coyotes, 
they can absolutely not run a big mono blade throttle body unless they have aftermarket cams. So that is the how, the why, the nuance between whether you should get a big single blade or a twin blade, tried and true twin blade. Um, other manufacturers, they do it a little bit differently. They've got maybe a twin and a mono. Um, some use a big round uh, mono. They've got a couple different sizes. The smaller you make the mono, the less surface area of the blade, the easier it is to crack it open in high vacuum situations. So there's a, you know, there's some, some logic and some reasoning there as to why they do that. Uh, some of the other nuance is in 2015, Ford introduced new electronics. You can just see from the motor cavity, it's much larger than the other ones. These electronics are better at breaking the vacuum and cracking open the blade. So, you know, this is one scenario where you can get away with a mono blade in a, an application that maybe shouldn't have one if you're using the 15F electronics. Um, however, the best thing to do is just stick with this for most builds in the seven to 900 rubber horsepower range and only go with this when your build gets extreme. I hope you learned something on my throttle body TED talk. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. I'll see you next time.